Hi, welcome back to chapter one of Chosen and Crown, Women of the Bible. Let's get started. I wore this shirt today in honor of Eve, chapter one. It says, grateful for his grace, Ezekiel 20, 43 through 44. Every statement on our shirts has a scripture reference that it came from. So God's grace, we are so grateful for because we're always needing his grace. So let's get started with Eve today. Meet Eve, the first woman Adonai created from Adam's rib and dust. She was chosen and designed for such a time as this to be the first woman in creation and the first wife in the first marriage. Adonai created the earth and everything in it. The Garden of Eden was a perfect place that provided everything anyone could possibly need, a place with no sin and complete shalom peace. It included two special trees in the center of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then he placed Adam and Eve in the garden to bless and have a relationship with them. Scripture says, Adonai formed man from the dust of the ground and then breathed life into his nostrils, causing the man to become a living person. That's Genesis 2, 7 through 8. After creating Adam, he chose to create a helpmate for him, just as he had done for the animals. Rather than create her directly from dust as he had Adam, he put Adam to sleep and formed her from one of his ribs so she would be a part of him. Adam called her bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh then named her woman, since she was created from his body. They were together in the garden, naked, and felt no shame. Genesis 2, 18 through 25. Living in the garden with Adonai must have been an incredible experience. The story tells us Adonai walked in the cool of the day with them what that must have been like to learn all things directly from the Father and feel his love in that perfect environment. A perfect life they lived in the garden with only one thing they were forbidden to do, eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adonai blessed them with so much and taught them everything they knew. They lacked nothing. The tree wasn't put there to tempt them, but to test them, to test their faith and obedience to him. Adonai does not tempt us to sin, but does introduce free will in this story. James 1.13 There is a tempter, though, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Satan the serpent, John 10.10. 10. One day, while everything was going perfectly, the serpent slithers in on the scene to tempt Eve and deceive her about Adonai, her God. In that moment, he successfully plants a seed of doubt in her mind, causing her to question why Adonai told Adam they were not to eat the forbidden fruit. All it takes is the tiniest bit of doubt to get your focus off Adonai. Once the enemy can get you to question what you think you know, it is easy for him to fill your mind with lies about what truth is and who and what Adonai created you to be. Once Eve ate the fruit, her eyes were opened and she suddenly realized she and Adam were naked. Her sin gave her a distorted view of truth. The shame from her sin and the sudden realization of her nakedness caused her to immediately want to cover 
her sin and shame. Together they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves, then hid from Adonai. What they didn't know was that you can't hide from him who sees all and knows all. Adonai was not surprised by their sin. He created them as humans and have given them free will. He did not make his plan as he went along each day, adjusting to twists and turns based on human decisions. Adonai has had the end planned from the beginning of time. Isaiah 46.10 We can't surprise him. When Adonai came looking for them in the cool of the evening and asked where they were, it wasn't because he didn't know. Genesis 3, he wanted to be with them. He loved them. Perhaps he was giving them a chance to repent. But scripture shows they were trying to place blame rather than repent. Their actions didn't cause him to stop loving them, but it did introduce consequences for sin. Regardless of repentance, out of Adonai's love for us, we still must pay the consequences for our disobedient decisions to learn from our mistakes and do better. After sin entered in, Adonai put Adam and Eve out of the garden and placed guards in front of the gates so they couldn't get back in. In this same chapter, we find Adonai talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit when he says, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing good and evil and having the opportunity to eat from the tree of life. Did you know there were two trees? Many believers were never taught there were two trees. If this is true for you, go to Genesis and seek the truth yourself you will be amazed at how much you haven't been taught. Society loves to criticize Eve for disobeying Adonai. Listening to the serpent, eating the fruit, sharing it with Adam, then putting blame on the serpent for her sin. What's ironic is people do this every day in their own life. Sinning, and putting the blame on others instead of being repentant. In Adonai's word, those who study it from cover to cover can learn that if they obey Adonai, they will be blessed. Subsequently, the reverse is true. When disobedience occurs, there will be consequences. There is forgiveness for repentant sin and judgment for unrepentant sin, with consequences for all sin. Let's unpack this scenario with Eve's sin and see what it would look like today. So you will know if you were doing the same thing she did. In today's society, this same scene would look like a believer who knows what Adonai expects, allows the enemy to trick them and question God's truth, and then chooses to do what the enemy has tempted them to do. Immediately, you are consumed with guilt and try to justify your disobedience by sharing it with others so you aren't alone in your sin. Sound familiar? Take a moment to pray and reflect on your life and how many times you have done the same thing as Eve. Repent, ask Adonai for forgiveness, and follow him, turning from your former ways. Having this knowledge should help us see that Eve isn't such a bad person after all, but human like the rest of us. Now would be a good time to give grace to yourself and to others who still have this truth to discover. Now that you see Eve is like the rest of us, human and sinful, let's see what lessons you can learn from her. Eve before the fruit fall. 
Adonai created her in his image. He spent time with her every day, talking and teaching her and her husband. She had the mind of Adonai because of the teaching. 1 Corinthians 2.16, Romans 12.2, 1 John 2.27, and Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Adonai provided everything she could possibly want or need. She had no stress. She had no worries. She walked in the garden. She rested. She had a great setup living in the garden. Adonai wants to bless you like he did Eve in the beginning. If you are obedient, you can enjoy his blessings while living on this sinful earth until you join him for eternity when Jesus returns for you. The question remains, why did she sin if she lived a blessed life? Sadly, that same question can be asked of all of us today. The story in the Bible says the serpent questioned her about the forbidden fruit and what God actually meant when he said she would die if she ate the fruit. She shared what Adonai told her and added that she wasn't even supposed to touch it. Scripture does not say that Adonai told her not to touch it. It says Adonai told Adam not to eat it. As soon as the serpent planted the seed of doubt about what Adonai had actually said, he had a door to slither in and make her question everything Adonai had told her, just like the enemy does with us today. He was relentless and wore her down until she began to entertain the idea that maybe Adonai didn't say what he said, that maybe the enemy was right. And Adonai was being unfair in keeping it from her so she wouldn't be like him. Perhaps she began to entertain the idea that being like Adonai might please him more than obeying him. Very similar to how believers can easily slip into the trap of believing Adonai prefers their service to him over their obedience to him. For the record, Adonai prefers obedience over sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Eve allowed deceit and doubt to creep in, causing her to believe the lie that she wanted to be like Adonai. Ironically, she was already like him. She was made in his image and he was teaching them his ways every day. Like a good father, he protected her from things she didn't need to know yet. But the enemy convinced her Adonai was unfair in keeping things from her. Through Eve, we learn valuable lessons that Adonai wants to teach us. To seek Adonai first in all things. When in doubt, ask Adonai. Align everything you hear with the holy word of God. To be satisfied that he knows what is best for us. Trust that he will meet all your needs. To learn from him. To stay close to him. In a relationship with him, we are under his covering of protection. Like an umbrella. He covers us when we stay close. However, we can choose to step away from him and outside his covering of protection. This story confirms for us these four things. Adonai loves us. Adonai teaches us. Adonai knows what is best for us. Adonai is enough. The t-shirt I had on yesterday said, God is enough. Same principle. Let's pray. 
Thank you, Adonai, for being my Abba Father, who loves me more than I can imagine with a love that is unconditional. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for the lessons you taught me through Eve's story and how they apply to my life today. Thank you for keeping me close so that the enemy cannot deceive me with his lies anymore. I give my life anew to you today and commit that I will cling to you, obey your commands, and follow your ways. Amen. Here are the reflection questions that you can pray about and ask God to help you answer. If you have the book, you've got space to write. If you don't have the book, pray and ask God to help you answer these questions. What is something new that you learned from this story today about Eve? Number two, what is a takeaway that you can apply to your life from Eve's story? And number three, describe how this story has given you new insight from the Holy Spirit. Until next time, God bless you.